Hi, Laura Hatch here from Front Office Rocks, and you are watching the Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world, and I have a huge treat for you today. You do not want to miss this. I've got my good friend, Laura Hatch, from Front Office Rocks, who is brilliant and has come a long way. I'm just so proud of you and where you're at, and uh, we're going to be talking about that in a second. But a couple sh uh, show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook, and so as you're watching the show, if you have questions, please do this. Add the questions to the feed, and then I'll dish them to Laura right away while we have her on. We'll get the answers straight from the experts. And then also, if you're watching these later on, like a lot of you are, continue to add questions to the feed and Laura will get back to you. You'll see she's fantastic at social media and we want you to get the most out of this. Now, uh, and, and please, please continue to send us your suggestions and uh, shows, your shares, all that kind of stuff. With all that's been happening, I was telling Laura before we went live, this is crazy. I don't even know how this has happened, but we got 39,000 followers on Facebook. So thank you guys for everything. And then again, on iTunes, I don't even know how that's working, but all of your suggestions, shares, we're just crazy grateful. So keep keep sending them to us. Now, my guest today is, you're one of the originals. Like I, when I had this idea, you were one of the first, I'm like, Hey, Laura, I'm watching you. Like, let's, let's talk together. And I said to you, we're going to do it live. And you're like, what? And so, um, you've been with me since the beginning of this journey. And so I want to thank you first of all, but here's the thing. I know we've got a lot of young students watching this now, dental students, younger dentists. We've now got international dentists watching this. Some of them might not know who Laura Hatch is. Let's start there. Who is Laura Hatch and what is front office rocks and where'd that come from in case somebody doesn't know? Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, I'm super excited. It's been a while since I've been on. I was on a lot in the beginning and then we, we took a break. So it's good to be back. Um, I'm Laura Hatch. I am a dental office manager. Um, I've been in dentistry since 2002. I was married to a dentist who needed an office manager, kind of threw me to the wolves and said, go. And so I've learned everything from running a front office, from answering phones, scheduling. I've done it all. Uh, been in the trenches. Um, at the front desk. And I opened a scratch practice in Baltimore, Maryland in 2003, moved to San Diego and opened a scratch practice in San Diego in 2007. During not a great economy and a really competitive market, you know, so I've had the opportunity to open two practices and realized a few years ago, now it's been like five years ago, that we don't have enough training for the front office. We don't have enough, we don't give enough support to our front office team members. And so I decided to start Front Office Rocks. Um, I was looking to help offices, but not be on the road traveling, uh, you know, and going in offices. I want to try to help as many offices as possible. So what I would do is work all day, take notes of all the things that happen in the front office, and then make videos at night. And so I've got over 180 videos, plus webinars, documents, training resources, for dental offices all online. And so Front Office Rocks is an online training website, basically, and it's there to help new dentists, old dentists all over the world. As long as you can keep up, speak English, and have the internet, you're, you're good to go with the training. Yeah, and it's so awesome. Not only you create this incredible resource for dentists and teams all over, this is so important too, because you and I have had this conversation so many, so many times, dentists hire team members and they go, go, and yeah. the team member goes, go where like and you go and they'll just say answer the phone and you're like oh my gosh and yep. so having a resource like this you're down in the trenches you shot shot all these videos they're very well done a lot of detail and all that and um it's awesome and now you're out speaking you're going to be one of the headliners at adam which we're going to talk about a little bit you got a course coming up here in salt lake city so if you see her coming to town don't even hesitate come and see her You'll love it. So, Laura, and this is getting to be a more and more important dialogue now forever because today we're going to be talking about how to have the hard conversation with the most difficult person in the office. Let's talk about why that's such an important topic. Why is that such a 
hard topic. So everyone's probably wondering who's the most difficult person in the office. Um, and you and I were talking about what's something that hasn't really been covered or, or we could talk about. It. And I speak all, I'm all over the country and I'm speaking all the time, usually to front office team members. And I have at least one person come up to me every single time and say, how do I get my doctor to understand this is important? How do I get my doctor to change something? How do I, and so it, it, I think it's huge because um, dentists, they, they feel that they're doing the right thing, but really a lot of times don't realize that they're the block. They're the reason something isn't fixing or they're not changing. And so I think that this is a hard conversation, like and not everybody's going to necessarily agree with me on everything I say, but I think it's something we need to be talking about because if you've got good team members who are trying to help you grow your practice and you're the one who's sitting in the way, we need to figure out how do we get that communication going if you really want to move your practice forward. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying, wait, wait, you're saying the dentist is the hardest person? Like, no, 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 no. Okay. Isn't it, isn't it the first, that, cause it's so, it's so. It's never, it's never the no, dentist. No, 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 it's never, it's never the dentist. It's always somebody else's problem, yeah. right? But all yeah. problems lead home to the leader. Would you agree? Yeah. You know, and it's uh, one of the things when I'm teaching front office, and I'm actually speaking on this subject at ADOM, um, when I'm talking to the front office, I think you have to start with first with the team members, where the dentist comes from. So the dentist, and not to put blame on dental schools and all that, but they don't get taught, you know, how to communicate, how to manage, how to, how to give feedback, how to good positive or negative feedback, how to go through change. I mean, dentists go to dental school to become dentists. Right. And a lot of these topics, subjects, um, issues that we need to work with our dentists on, they're not trained in that area. They're not necessarily good in that area. So the first thing is to realize that who we're dealing with, you know, and on the flip side, most of us in the front office, we didn't have formal management training. Um, you know, I joke around and say you were either a dental assistant who got promoted or you got moved up front or you worked in another industry and got hired. But we've got people who are, are running small businesses and have difficult things they have to handle, not trained in communication, not trained in, in having meetings and, and dealing with this. And so we have to first recognize that there's a there's a lack there that that now there's so much out there that you can get training on how to do this, but we need to do that because it's really important if you're going to have the office move forward. Yeah. And not only is there a lack of training, but would you agree like this is the biggest problem in running any business? D dentists say all the time, well, my practice is unique. No, no, no. Let's simplify this. You're in the people business, in yeah. the people business of serving people, which means you hire people. And one of the key elements of having a great practice is you got to have a great team. But that doesn't happen without a little bit of conflict. And the misnomer that we often have, would you agree, is that we think the better we get, there should be no conflict. But conflict actually increases yes. as your practice grows. Would you agree with that? Yeah, or? yeah completely. And I, I also think, and I'm not quoting, like I don't know specifically, but I think that a lot of dentists have, um, their personality isn't necessarily, um, you know, they would rather do this and right. just kind of avoid. I mean, I, I actually worked at a dentist once. I went in the office and there was a wall, really pretty front desk, check in, check out, gorgeous, you know, marble countertop. And there was a wall with a door built right in the middle. And I said, what, what's the wall? It doesn't make sense. It's kind of weird. And, he, and they told me because the girl that used to sit at check in and the girl that sat at check out didn't get along. So the dentist's solution was to build a wall with a door between them so they didn't have to see each other. Right. Oh. What? Right. Because he didn't, he just didn't, he was very introverted. He's very technical. He's very clinical. And it was just easier to build a wall than actually sit down and help them deal with the drama that they were having. So yeah. I think that that's a big thing too. Okay. So the title of this show is the best practices show. That would not be a best practice. Yeah. Of best practice. And I, I just having all this recall of like, I had a team member say to me one time in this long time ago, she said, you know, it would work really great here is if all of our patients could just drop off their teeth and he could work on them. And I'm like, Oh no, right. that's not good either. So well, let's just get all that on the table right away. I think um, the other thing too is, and, and again, this is where I try to help team members understand what they're up against with the dentist, meaning what they're dealing with. You know, the dentist, many times they bring out their best bedside manners to the patients and they should, right? They need to, they need to be on stage giving that patient the best customer service. And when they walk out of that operatory, you know, it's like, <sighs> right? And, and, and they would prefer to go in their office sometimes and just leave me alone. You know, and we jump them in the hallway as soon as they walk out of the operatory with a problem, 
with an issue. And, you know, they're, they're dealing with, you know, little teeth and lots of durals and stuff. And then we turn around and tell them that the schedule just fell apart. And so we have to understand too, kind of what our dentists um, go through, you know, day to day. And when we have these conversations, which we'll talk about how to do them at the right time, how to do them the right way, because it's not when they're walking out of the operatory after the difficult root canal to tell them the problem then. All right, cool. I love this. Now that we've established who the most difficult person is on your team, let's talk about hard conversations and then let's get into the how. What are some hard conversations? Because you get to see this all the time. What are typical hard conversations that happen in great practices? Well, I would say the first, the main one, the biggest one is uh, ignoring the the drama and the gossip in the office, ignoring the staff issues. Dentists are very good at, and and I'm I'm generalizing, so I hope I'm not offending anybody by saying this. It's not all dentists, right? Um, But the dentists who have the biggest problems with drama and gossip and and stuff like that in the office, they're ignoring it. They're just hiding from it and and not not dealing with it. So I think that is probably the biggest one. Um, Most of the time, um, you find out when you actually get in there that there's one person stirring the pot. There's one person causing the problem. Uh, but the dentist, a lot of times, is afraid to hire or to fire. They're afraid to to lose somebody. You know, it's a great producer. It's my best dental assistant. It's the and and so that's a difficult conversation to have. And I think that the team knows, and the office manager knows what the problem is, but the dentist doesn't want to doesn't want to address it, doesn't want to talk about it, doesn't want to handle it. And then it and then it affects everybody. I mean, it affects the entire practice. It affects the patients. I mean, we have a dentist across the street having a major drama gossip problem over there and where he's losing patients all the time coming to our practice because he's not handling it, you know? So it's a, it, that's probably the biggest thing that I hear about. Right. And ignoring it doesn't make it go away. Like it doesn't magically fix itself. Would you agree? I would actually argue there's probably some statistical evidence that says the longer conflict is unresolved, the bigger the bomb is when yes. it goes off. Right. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, it's not just always affecting just that person either or the people like, let's say you have, I don't know, a dental assistant. And so it's yeah. not just affecting the dental assistants in the back because they're having a problem back there. It's affecting the entire team. And if the dentist isn't addressing it and handling it, eventually the team starts to go, well, if he, she doesn't have to follow the rules, why do we, you know, and it becomes like a fungus. It just kind of grows and grows. And then we wonder why we have so much turnover in the dental office. We wonder why we can't keep employees. We wonder why people don't like to go to work on Monday morning. Well, you don't want to go to work in an environment that's not good, you know? Um, so, yeah, so it's definitely ignoring it. It's just going to make it bigger. Yeah. So so if I'm a team member watching this, Laura, help me. What, where, where do I start? Okay. Because I see all these things going on. Let's say I'm an assistant in the back and I see conflict over here and the dentist is avoiding it and the door is shut. I love that one. The door is shut like yeah. all the time. What do I do? Do I do I just let it go? Because if he doesn't care I, or she doesn't care, I shouldn't care, right? Right, exactly. So part of what you have to determine first is um, getting the doctor at the right time. So not grabbing them in the hallway, not grabbing them as, as they walk out, not grabbing them first thing in the morning, you know, scheduling a time. Um, I would say, you know, and maybe not even like at the end of the day, go, hey, can we talk? Let's actually, instead of that, let's schedule a time. Doctor, I have a concern about something. I want to get some time with you so we can discuss it. So that way the doctor's prepared, you know, and we get into a place or a time that they actually can focus on what the issue is. Uh, I think that's a respect thing. And I think um, it's just important to do. You're going to get the doctor hopefully at, at the best. And you know your doctors. You know, if, if you know they're better in the morning, ask them to meet you a little early for a cup of coffee. If you know they're better on a different time of day, then ask them to do that. But you want to give them the right mindset. Um, the second thing I think you really need to do is you need to ask the dentist, do, do they want do they want, and it's kind of hard to, do they want your help? Do they want some feedback? Do they want to grow the practice? Do they want to fix, you know, do they feel like there's stuff going on in the practice? Do they want to, um, maybe, maybe your office needs to go paperless and the doctor's holding onto those charts. Like it's, you know, well, do we want to move forward with this practice and get the doctor to, to say, yeah, you know, you may unfortunately have a dentist who says, no, I don't really care. I'm five years from retiring and I'm, I don't really care. Probably not, but you want to make sure that you've kind of established this conversation so that you, you're you like, I'm just here to help. You know, I see things going on. I have suggestions. I have an idea. 
Um, I'm just here to help. And then understand that your doctor's not trained in how to handle these kind of conversations. So you want to kind of baby step the conversation with them. Because if you come at them full force, you know, you, you may scare them. So a yeah. lot of it is kind of prepping it the right way. Yeah, and we could almost use this as a recipe, just go straight down there. So I, I'm being facetious because this is such a hot topic. I mean, grabbing your doctor in the hallway in between prepping teeth and going, we need to talk. That's real because those are the worst. That's the worst phrase you could ever say to any because, you know, whatever is going to happen after that is always bad. So I'm joking when I'm saying, you know, do that. Don't do that. And then secondly, I mean, you could almost say, hey, look, I'm going to pull you aside and then I'm going to ask you a question tomorrow. I just need to know, uh, you know, um, Number one, I need the time to ask you this question. Is is it important that you get feedback from me as a team member? If not, at least I know where I stand. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I think the other thing too is uh, go go into the meeting prepared. Go and a lot of times I think team members come in and they dump the problem on the dentist. They go, "There's a problem with so and so in the back," right. or "There's a problem with our schedule," or whatever it is. And that don't do that to your doctor. Come to your doctor with suggestions. So right. here's the problem. I think there's, there's three options of how we can handle this. I think that's huge because when, if you're always just, or if your team's going to the doctor and just dumping problems on them, then, then they're not going to want to have meetings with you. They're not going to want to try to fix things because all you're doing is bringing in problems. Right. So I think that as being prepared going into the meeting is important too. Right. And that's been taught for a long time. You know, as long as I've been in this business, that it's easy to say, but harder to do is that if you're going to bring a problem, bring three solutions and you suggest you write them out or you, you just can't process externally with a dentist because that could go on for an hour. You know, right. sometimes how yeah. would I be prepared for a meeting like that? Yeah, I think that I mean. So as an employee, put yourself in the doctor's shoes, you know, understand that the dentist has a lot of stress. They have a lot of, they have to do, I mean, literally I, the concept for me of picking up a handpiece and drilling on a, on a tooth this small, I mean, that just stresses me out, right? <laughs> me too. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not clinical at all. So the doctor has a lot of stresses throughout the day, not only dental and clinical, but now business. And so if you, if you keep coming to the doctor without good solutions, without showing ways, then they're just going to, they're just stop bringing me problems. So think about you sitting in their seat. How would you, if you were in their seat, because it's easy as an employee, I know I was an employee. It's easy to look at the boss and go, well, I would have done it differently. I, right. I know more than he does. I, psh, this, this is my practice, right? But actually put yourself in his shoes or her shoes. You know, how would you handle this? You've got a great employee who, overall does great with the patients, but is causing drama in the back. What do you suggest the doctor does? Or what do you, what would you do? You've got, we need to go paperless. We need to, we need to fix the schedule. We need training, whatever it is, put yourselves in their shoes and then give them three, you know, three options if you can come up with them. Cause if you can't come up with them, then maybe, maybe it's not a problem or maybe, you, you know, you need to have a different kind of meeting, but you definitely want to be prepared. Yeah. Now I'm going to kind of lead you with this question because you've done this twice now. When you start a practice and it's small, you can deal with things, but as it gets bigger, you have more potential for more conflict. Would you agree with more moving parts? More Is this yeah. harder to do in a big practice, harder to do in a small practice? Like what's your perspective on that? Um, I don't know if it's big. I mean, it's all in the culture. I think it's all in how you start the culture. If you have open door communication, if you are, everyone's working as a team trying to grow um, I think a big, huge part is hiring correctly. You know, the bigger the team, the more hires you have, you bring in one, one person that's going to mess up the culture. And if the team doesn't stand behind keeping that culture and, and making sure it stays in place, that can mess everything up. In fact, if somebody hasn't wa watched it, Kirk Spodak, you did a, you did an interview with him like yeah. a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I love what he does. And, and I think this is huge. You know, he lets the team interview the employees and he, right. he lets the team decide because his thing is he says, you know, you, you take an employee and you stick them in the, you say here, work together. And maybe they don't work together well. So right. a lot of it is in hiring and the culture, I think. And the bigger you get the, yeah, there are more chances for conflict. Yeah, that is so true. And I remember that podcast. And he's got like 50 team members. So that's, or, or more even like, yeah. so totally agree with that. Yeah. And what they, and the reason I love that is, is he, 
he has, and I've seen him speak a couple times since then. And he has said, you know, it, it, it has the team hold every, the new employees accountable. It has everybody holding each other accountable because we're like, hey, we, we, we work together. I need you to not do that because it's making the environment not good for us versus always going to the dentist to go, she's gossiping or she's causing problems or not doing instruments. They hold each other accountable. And I think that's huge. I mean, we're adults, you know, yeah. so your team, if you can have a team that will hold each other accountable, I mean, that would be a great place, great yeah. place to work. You know, absolutely. So what if I'm a team member and I've done these first two steps and doctor listens to me and does one of these yeah. and, yeah. and nothing happens. So any suggestion or is there a third step or a fourth step in this whole process? Well, I think it's baby steps. And okay. so, and I specifically, um, I'm doing this, this presentation in ADOM for office managers. Cause I do think, you know, I don't think every employee needs to go to the dentist every single time something little comes up. I mean, there's a hierarchy, there's a way that things should be handled in the practice, right. um, but for office managers, or if you have somebody who's in the leadership, you know, practice manager or whatever, then it should go to them and then they should go to the dentist. Um, I think that you should bring one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm them. The dentist with like six things you're trying to fix or you're trying to, to do. Um, and I think you should get a commitment from the dentist of the next step. And the next step might just be, can we continue this conversation in a week? Can we continue this conversation, whatever? Right. Because they, the doctor may not be ready to, to confront whatever it is you're talking about. And, and it might be too much and maybe they need to process it. Maybe they need to go home and just sleep on it. So there should be some sort of a commitment and it might not be, we're going to fix this problem right now. It just might be, can we continue this conversation? And part of it is saying, you know, you're asking me doctor to run this practice and take care of our patients. And this issue is in the way of, of have, letting us do that. So how would you like us to address this? And maybe they have to think about it. You know, here are three options I think that would work. And just have that, that conversation with the dentist. And if you're not going to come to a resolution right now, then get the commitment to keep the discussion going. Because some of these topics, I mean, staff drama, gossip, that doesn't fix overnight. It took months and years to get there. It's going to take time to, to clean it up. Yeah, I totally agree. And as a leader, inviting this and welcoming it and let, letting your team know that this is important. And I was just thinking, um, I was talking to one of our uh, one of our best clients. His name is Todd Larrabee, practices in uh, Tennessee. And he uses a base camp, which is, uh, it's a it's kind of an app. They all, all the team, his team is as large as it's ever been, he and his wife, Tara. And they use the app base camp and they only do two things celebrations and challenges. Things are working because it's important to, to reiterate, hey, look, this is working. And then every team member is, um, they have the opportunity to add challenges every day. Now, it doesn't get to all of them, but it gives them plenty to work on between this team meeting and the next team meeting and say, look, I recognize these are challenges and the team members can see that they're working on those. So whatever you use, it doesn't always have to be a software, but you've got to invite this back from the team. And I've even heard of team members having a, an anonymous way to be able to submit it just to say, Hey, look, I got to get this out there, doc, here's some solutions so yeah. that we can all work together. We have that. We have um, a form that we have mailboxes in the office and the form is here's the issue. Here's the challenge. Here's the concern I have. And then here are my suggestions and you could do it anonymously or you could write your name on it. And then it gets given and the doctors actually have different mailboxes. They have a clinical mailbox and a business owner mailbox. And so that way, when they go to get paperwork and referral letters and stuff, that's the clinical. That's what they're doing during the day. That's when they're a dentist. Let them be a dentist. Yeah. Unless the bill is on fire or something, let the dentist be a dentist during that time. And then at the end of the day or over lunch or when they have some time on a Friday, they can go through their business stuff, the suggestions and things. Because we really have to... Just like I wear multiple hats at the front desk, our dentist wears multiple hats. And right. we need to respect that because when they're wearing the dental hat, we don't want to come at them with a business thing because you're probably it's like it's like catching dad when he walks in from work. You know, you don't want to catch dad when he walks in from work because he's probably gonna say no to whatever you're asking, right? Yeah. Let's catch dad after he's had a cup of coffee or he's gotten to take his shoes off or whatever. So it's right. the same thing with the doctor. Right. And the doctor sometimes is so narrowly focused that that's the that's the time where the wheels might come off the bus the most. Yeah. In, that, in those moments, because they can be very intense. Yeah, totally. yeah. That is cool that you have that. So you have the business suggestion box, and then do you just have a form that people fill so there's, 
form and then and they can put the subject or whatever the challenge is and then and it re reminds them and suggestions to fix this so that that way it's not just and there's because that's another thing is there's all, besides time of communication like when you should have this meeting with your doctor it's also what's the best way to communicate mm -hmm. sometimes written is better than verbal so if you, you know, if, if it's something that, you know, the doctor is going to need to process, they're going to want to think about, or they want to know it's coming. Like they, they want to know, Hey, we're going to talk about something and here's the issue I have. Sometimes writing it out for them and giving them a little bit of a head start on what the conversation is going to be is, is, is going to be better than just, Hey, can we sit down and talk? Cause as soon as I'll tell you, I was married to a dentist for 22 years. As soon as an employee goes, can I talk? The doctor's like, oh, right? they're either quitting, they're asking for more money, there's a problem, right? And so you don't want your doctor going into a meeting defensive if you can avoid it. Get them, you know, get them best prepared, yeah. you know, and if it's writing something out with suggestions so they know what that you want to talk about, that might help. Yeah. What potential pitfalls do you have on either side of this as you get better at this? Is there anything you could think of? Um, well, there's always the, the dentist that doesn't want to change. Okay. There's always a dentist who doesn't want to address it. And I feel, I'm glad that, you know, like, like you are great with helping dentists become leaders and realize that they need to be able to handle a lot of this. But there are just some dentists out there who they just want to be a dentist, you know, and, and they don't want to change. And that's going to be a pitfall because if you're an employee working for a dentist and you want to grow and you want to fix the, the office and you want to have a great environment and that dentist doesn't care, that might be an issue. Now, I don't think you'll find that most of the time. I think most dentists, and I tell team members this, I think most dentists would love it if you came to them with ideas, with suggestions, because a lot of times when we put these problems on the dentist plate, the reason we don't get any any results is because they don't know what to do. Right. I mean, they don't, you know, they don't know. And, and a lot of times if we handle things early when they're small, like, you know, somebody was late to work. Somebody gave somebody an attitude. Handle it then. Don't let it build over six months or eight months because then that's when it blows up, like you were talking about. Yeah, unresolved conflicts always become a crisis, whether it be perio, whether it be relationships, money, anything. It gets bigger and it explodes later um, in all that. Um, gosh, when you you get these questions all the time too, I, I can see both sides. I have team members that come up to me at seminars and they go, how do I get my dentist to even come in this room? You know, And then you also have dentists that come to you and go, she'll never do any of this. And I think the important thing of what you're saying, if you didn't hear anything of what Laura said is, look, invite that opportunity if they want to grow. Because if they don't, what happens is you're going to have to lower your expectations. Because when team members don't want to change, they're not going to change. And when you can't change the people, it's just time to change the people. Same thing for you as a team member. Like if your dentist is never going to change, don't hope that they're going to change. Go find somewhere else to work yeah. so that you don't make yourself crazy. But I think if somebody's watching a podcast, they're probably involved in a practice that's trying to get better. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree. And I think there's so many resources out there now, too. So when I speak, I, I just spoke to a bunch of dentists uh, like a week ago, and we were talking about that there's so many resources, this show, other, you know, other podcasts, like there's books out there. I wrote a book about step away from the drill, you know, how to run your practice. Like there's so many resources now. Um, and everybody I talk to, the the first, whether it's the dentist or the receptionist or the dental assistant or whatever, before you start pointing fingers, look in the mirror. Yeah. Because... If you're pointing, and I tell you, the biggest issue with gossip and drama in the dental offices is everyone's involved in it. You know, office managers come to me and they say, well, there's a problem, blah, blah, blah. I bet you you're involved in it. You're listening. You're taking part. So look in the mirror, you know. Um, wow. if, you, if you're worried about what somebody, because we're a female-dominated industry, right? And females tend to worry more about what somebody else isn't doing than what they should be doing. So the first step is to look in the mirror and say, as a leader, as the dentist, how am I playing into this problem? As an employee, before I start pointing fingers, let me look in the mirror and say, is there anything I contributed to this or I could do to fix this myself? Yeah, that's so good. What other suggestions would you have for having the hard conversations with the most difficult person? Um, I would say that, like I said a minute ago too, it, it, um, it didn't, the problem didn't, whatever it is, didn't happen overnight. And it's not going to get solved overnight. So some of these conversations, I think a lot of times um, employees or office managers or team members, they go to the dentist and the dentist says, you know, doesn't say anything or says no. And they go, well, I tried. And they walk away and they think the conversation's over. Um, 
That's what I'm saying. If you don't get the resolution you want, ask for a follow-up meeting. Ask when we can address it again. Ask, you know, can we can we talk about this next month again? Can we, because at least the door's open and every single time you talk about it, it's kind of like a patient, you know, a patient right. that you don't want to do, you're not going to stop talking to them about their dentistry. Every time they come in, you're just, you're reminding them again until finally that clicks because sometimes change needs to come when there's pain. Right. And you know, maybe a little issues coming up in the practice. It's not a big deal, but it starts to grow. The schedule starts to fall apart, whatever. Now it's painful to the dentist and the dentist is going to want to talk to you about what the issue is. So you want to leave that door open yeah. and continue the conversation. That is so true because some of the biggest change we've ever seen is when something bad happens, you know, yeah. dentists are stressed and then they do that. Now it's okay to let it happen once, but to let it repeat is stupid. Yeah. So, well, you know, when you recognize the pattern, you're like, okay, this is heading in a wrong direction. That's yeah. the time you got to jump on it. Yeah. I give it, when I talk about this, I give an example, let's say um, you have morning huddle at 730 mm -hmm. and everybody's supposed to be there at 730 in the consult room going over the schedule. And at 745, your dental assistant walks in with a Starbucks cup in her hand and goes, I'm sorry, traffic was bad, right? <laughs> If you don't address that, then what happens is you go in the office, the dentist, you're frustrated. You're like, why is she not here on time? You prefer not to work with that assistant that day. You might, you might find other things for that assistant to do because you want to work with the other assistant. The rest of the team's looking around going, well, apparently she can stop and come in whatever time. I guess I don't have to be here on time. And then if that's not handled just that one time, it becomes a second time and a third time. And now other people are coming late. And then you look back five years later and you're like, well, why does nobody show up to huddle on time? Right. right. So that's what I'm saying. If you address these things when it's little and, and same with team members, you know, the difficult conversation with a difficult person may, may not always be the dentist. It might be with one of your coworkers. Right. It might be the peer. And if you handle it when it's small, like, I don't understand why you didn't do this. Can you help me so that we can do this together in the future or whatever? Ha handle it when it's small. It doesn't need to blow up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I talk about is in the morning huddle. We, we talk about challenges that happened yesterday. So kind of like you were saying with base camp, what happened yesterday that we could have probably done better? Where, right. where, do we have, where do we have some issues with teamwork and how can we fix that in the future? And then where are there potential for problems today? Like right. let's, we know we, we work in a stressful environment. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of, we know it's going to get stressful at times, but if we talk about it ahead of time and say, Hey, listen, this afternoon schedule is crazy crazy busy. So if anybody can jump in the back and help us turn over rooms, that would be great. That's way better than having assistants in the back slamming instruments around because they feel nobody's helping them. So a lot of that can be, you can have those conversations when they're little and then they don't need to become a big issue. Yeah. And I think that's one of the golden pearls that you're sharing. that's so powerful is having that meeting to proactively go after this because dentists come up to you all and say, I don't have time for a huddle. But yeah. We used to do them. We don't do them anymore. You know, sometimes people think, well, it's an opportunity to talk about production. No, it's a, it's an opportunity to keep the culture healthy, to proactively put out fires before they get to be bigger. And so there's a big reason to have some type of a starting point before all the chaos begins. Wouldn't you agree? Like even team meetings, like people don't do team meetings anymore because it's the same thing over and over again. What would you say to that? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I noticed since I've started teaching and, and speaking more, I noticed every industry has huddles. Have you noticed that? I've like noticed the, that. Yep. The, the pilot and the crew before you get on a plane, they have a huddle. The, the serving crew before they restaurant opens, they have a huddle. It, it gets everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, and if your huddles handled correctly or your team meet meetings handled correctly, it's a productive, positive thing. Yep. If you don't run the meeting well, then it, it becomes a bitch session and, and she's doing this and you know people are sitting there and then you don't have the meeting. So there's there's actual, and I'm sure you have outlines, I have outlines of how to run a productive meeting, yep. how to run a productive huddle. It's not just talking about production. Um, with the, one of the things that I suggest for an office that has not had productive meetings and you're trying to get them in or you're trying to have the meetings be positive, Watch this show, get it, get one of these and watch it as a team and then discuss it. Watch one of my webinars, watch one of my, and, and then talk about it with your team, because these are great resources that you can bring in your office and almost kind of lead your team down the road that you want them to, to follow. Absolutely. I think you hit a home run, like every industry. I mean, the, even the servers at Applebee's have a pre-shift meeting before they go to work. There aren't very few businesses where people just go to work. They, yeah. There just isn't. And you, it's hard to find. And the thing is, is think about our environments. You know, your hygienists go in their operatories. The assistants go in the operatories. The doctor, if we're up front at the front desk, if we don't work 
together very much. We work in our space. And so to get everybody, uh, what I like to say is get their heads out of the hole and, and talking to each other once a month, have everybody, that just keeps everybody aligned. It keeps everybody on the same page. Another thing that I love, and you and I've talked about this, I think, too, is we wore the headsets, the walkie-talkies yeah. in our practice. That was huge because it really made us stay connected when we were in our different environments. And, and we knew what was going on in the back and in the front. And we could, we could collaborate. And sometimes we'd even have like a little joke. And everybody's giggling in their little areas. And it just keeps the energy as one versus I'm in my space and I only, and I only focus here. Yeah, that is so powerful. Now, there's so many things you can do. You can look at front office rocks. Like anything that you, you know, I want, I want to encourage everybody, if you're watching this, get involved with front office rocks. You know, we didn't talk about your book, but you got to read your book. Like you spent a lot of time putting that book together. And hold on one sec. I totally forgot. I forgot to connect to power. We're going to lose. I'm going to lose. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I was just thinking it's all that. Details. There we go. Kirk is coming up close, right? Wait, wait, hold on. Here we go. We don't want to lose the live of that. I no, was no, no, no. Okay. I forgot yeah. to plug it. Now tell us about like there, if you're struggling with this, there's a lot of ways you can read your book. Tell us about your book, Stepping Away from the Drill. What is it? So Stepping Away from the Drill, one of the things that I'm working on at, with Front Office Rocks is I want dentists to realize how important the front office is and how, how vital we play. I mean, we're rock stars up front. I also want front office employees to, to realize what rock stars you are, you know, how much you play into the patient experience. Part of a dentist. A lot of times dentists don't know what's supposed to happen in the front. They know the clinical, they know what the assistants want, they need from the assistants and the hygienists, but they don't know how we're supposed to answer the phones, how we do a productive schedule. So Step Away from the Drill is, uh, is a book written to the dentist that you can, you can do with a book, you know, with a book club with your team too, if you want, but it's written to the dentist to just understand what's supposed to be happening in the front. What do we want out of the receptionists and the phones? How do we want the schedule to put together? How do we want to talk to patients about treatment? So it's, the first step to fixing something is to understand what's wrong with it, to understand right. what's, and if a dentist goes like this and ignores it, you're not going to fix it. So the book was written for dentists to help them understand what do we, what, what should I want in the front? And then I have a, a guide that they can work through an implementation plan where they can sit down with their scheduler and say, okay, here's where we want to be. Here's where we are. Let's figure out a plan to get us there. And so that way you can collaborate with your front office team. Yeah, and you're going to see everything that Laura does. There's never a dull moment. There's, there's no fluff. It's You're straight to the point, like almost to the point where I'm like, wow, she's just going there. She's yeah. just going to say it like it needs to be said, which I, I certainly appreciate. I always apologize in the beginning of whenever I speak when there's dentists in the room because I'm like, I'm going to go there. I yeah. promise we'll be friends at the end, I swear. But I have to have the employees understand where you're coming from. Right. For them to be able to work with you, to be able to help you, to be able to grow the practice. And it's important, you know, and, and the dentist, I think, respect it. It's fine. But I'm very like, this is what your dentist is thinking when they're in the room. They're thinking, I just wish this would just go away. I don't want to handle this. Right. And it, it's and it's fine. And we can get there together. Absolutely. And two other things I want people to consider if they're watching this. You've got a great course coming up in um, in Utah. Right. You're going to do a great. Tell us yep. about that. What is that? So I speak all over the country a lot of times for other meetings and stuff, but four times a year I do my own one-day seminar. So it's okay. just one of my four that I do this year. The next one's in Salt Lake, July 27th, and I think there's a link here. People can look into it if they want to come. Uh, and then we have one in Kansas City and then in Dallas at the end of the year. So I'm around the country for my own events. And it's literally all day, all front office, all the stuff I love, scheduling, answering phones, dealing with your doctors, case acceptance, everything that we we have an impact on in the front office. Um, so I'm excited. So if anybody can come to Salt Lake, I would love it if they would join us. Yeah. And if you go to Salt Lake, you're going to get writer's cramp because you're going to see everything that she's going to do. You're going to write so fast. It's really, really good stuff. Now, also, you're going to ADOM and you're one of the key speakers. Like, I love ADOM. Tell people what ADOM is. It's kind of like one of those hid. It's not so much hidden gem. It's just one of those gems that people don't give enough energy to because it's an amazing resource, right? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I ask when I speak, how many people have heard of ADOM? And it's still maybe 25% of the room. I'm shocked. Um, ADOM is the American Association of Dental Office Management. And I found them in 2012. And I think I've told you this before. I remember going to the first conference and walking in and like, oh, these are my people, like a, mm -hmm. a room full of practice administrators and office managers. And it's amazing. And it's a conference for the front office, a lot of times we go to these dental meetings and it's so focused on clinical. It's right. so all the speakers, all of the vendors, all the sponsors, it's clinical. And there's not a lot for the front office. 
ADOM is specific to dental office management. So all the vendors there, all the speakers, everybody there is focused on helping us in our in our roles in, in the dental office. So it's my favorite. Um, I started in 2012. I became a FADOM the next year, which is a fellow, a fellow of ADOM. Wow. So I got to wear the cap and ground. I, I get the letters after my name, you know, like RDH, DDS. I'm a FADOM. Very cool. Uh, and then over the years, I've been begging them to let me speak. And so I started speaking two years ago. I'm speaking twice this year. I'm doing one on first 30 days as an office manager. What do you need to do to, to get going? And then the second one is how to have difficult conversations with your dentist. And so I'm going to get into the nitty gritty with a real recipe on what we're talking about today. Well, just this woman, if, if it's been done in a dental practice or it's happened, she's experienced. There are times I call you, I go, I don't know what to do with this one. And you're like, that's yeah. easier. I actually, it's funny because I talk about you and I and how we you train on so much great stuff. And I've seen you speak and stuff, but I laugh because I'm like, I was there. Yeah. I, I was at the, you know, I'm like, put Kirk at the front desk with eight phone calls coming in and a baby because a patient got brought in. And then the, the hygienist, <laughs> you know, and the dentist, right? Like there's a, so I'm not a consultant. I don't have you know, I have systems and pop practice, but I, I speak from the trenches. Yeah. You know, you got a patient in front of you, the phone's ringing, the ba they brought a baby in. Can you hold the baby, the plumber, the, the toilet's overflowing? Like that's what we deal with in the front. And so that's really, that's really what my focus comes from. That is so fun. That's so fun. Well, I, as always, I always love our conversations. And if you haven't checked out Front Office Rocks, I'm going to encourage you to do check it out. Check out our website. You've got a great, um, FAQ section. You got awesome. You do webinars, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and we're going to have you back for more and more stuff on, on different topics. So Laura, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate you a ton. Um, you. any last thoughts you have? I would say, honestly, just to go back for anybody watching this, think about watching some of these videos with your team at a team meeting, find somebody that you related with or, or taught something great or, because a lot of times what we tell our teams, it's like, want, 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 want. But, you know, Kirk says it or I say it and they go, wow, right. You know, so it's nice to bring a third party at, from somewhere else and, and share it with the team. So that'd be my last kind of final suggestion. It's good stuff. Well, I always enjoy these conversations. So thank you so much. And stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you watching today. And if you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor. Hit the share button. Share with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for shows that you want to see like you guys are doing. I love it. We're lining them all up. And things that you want to see from Laura, I am so happy to ask her the difficult questions because she's going to give us some really good answers. Um, so until we see you next time. Keep watching the best practices show. You guys have a great rest of your day.